You start today with the highlights. There was one game that stood out just a little bit. Do you think, baby? You, you want to go? You want to go? Let's let's do some Lions and Cowboys. What do you think? There's Megatron, Des Bryant. That was the matchup everybody was talking about before the game. Ooh. Here he is, 81. Ooh. Could he go the distance? Is he answering the call? Yes, but the problem <laughs> playing cover two, you get past the corner. The safety is 15 to 7 yards, 17 yards deep, and this is what you got to deal with. 87-yard gain for Megatron. Yeah, a little Teddy Riley. Four plays later, they <laughs> they go ahead and let Damn. him score. His seventh touchdown of the year lines up seven and up it. Calvin Johnson doing a celebration thing, which isn't much for him. Uh -oh. Des Bryant on the sidelines said this this week. I believe I can do whatever he can do. Des Bryant referring to Calvin Johnson. And how about this? A phenomenal that's a great play. Right that's a phenomenal grab. This is pure athletic ability right there, what you see with Des Bryant. This is Des Bryant saying, I am going to go up and get it, and nobody is going to stop You got me. two guys on him, and the corner doesn't get outside, and you know Des Bryant's running the fade. Great play, great focus, great concentration. What a play by Des Bryant. Yeah, everybody's happening. happy now. Yeah, everybody's good. Give him time. Third quarter. Things would change a little bit. <laughs> Matthew Stafford. Deep over the middle to Calvin Johnson. We don't see him do this very often. Oh. He, what happened, Willie? Contact. Sometimes when you get a good hit and draw that ball loose, and he was trying to make a play. He was trying to spin out of him. This is a good play by the defense. Yeah, you got Barry... to give him some props sometimes, Dan. It's okay. Well, it's okay to give defense props. <laughs> Barry right. Church hits him. Brandon Carr recovers. Matthew Stafford can't believe that his go-to guy fumbled. It's okay. I believe he would make up for it later in the game. Yeah. No worries, Matthew. You don't mind. So on the ensuing Cowboys possession, Tony Romo looking for Dez here, but that's that's bad. That's that's a little behind. So the Cowboys had to settle on a 53-yard field goal. Dez Bryant, irate on the sidelines. What's he saying, Irv? He, he, he ran back like somebody said something. Yeah, yeah, Dez, it, 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 he's talking about he wants the football. Put the ball where I can catch He's it. talking about he wants the football. How about that? Now, so, see, we showed it like uh, right after that play, and he went over here and told him that. It didn't, it didn't happen come like, off that. like that. No. Not in that sequence. It did not come down. Like that that happened in that sequence. Yes, it that, that did. That How did. You stop that, Fon. You, you need two Reeves's. <laughs> <laughs> so, here are the Cowboys. And they're starting to look good here I like, because I like this kid, Terrence man. Williams, why not? I like Williams. Yeah, I did XO on him this morning. He's really starting to play. It plays hard right now. Well, you didn't play XO on, on Miles Austin. That's, I can't get him on the field. That's his fourth straight game with a touchdown, and the Four Cowboys straight. take a Cowboys. 20 a record. to wow. 10 lead. It is a rookie record for the Cowboys. And wow. Here's get Stafford to Megatron he again. Tried. He tried to get in there. See, the corner was on the ground. Here. Yes. Well, that sets up a joint yes. belt touchdown. So okay. it's a three-point game with the Lions trailing by three. Tony Romo now to Des Bryant. This is a special play. This is the thing that Des Bryant was arguing about. He called Calvin Johnson out. Now he has to perform. They wasn't getting him the ball at that point. He yelled. They got him the ball. That's the result. Well, Everybody's so happy now. Now it's a 10-point lead. They're still Jason happy Garrett, for now. Yeah. Des, everybody's celebrating. But let's not forget that Matthew Stafford has a guy who can catch, too, and his wow. name is Calvin. Wow. Calvin Johnson, guys, 14 catches, 329 yards on the day. Two guys. What can you do here, Prime? You got to go up and get the ball at the highest point. That's what they teach defensive backs to do. But if the defensive back could do that, they would be playing receiver. All right, so it's third and 12 on their own 23. Jason Garrett calls a passing play with just over two minutes to go. A lot of people second-guessing the call. Maybe he should have ran it. The Cowboys are forced to punt. Now, Jason Garrett could have forced him to call a timeout, but he didn't. So it's fourth and 12 on the suing Lions possession. Matthew Stafford almost picked off by Jeff Heath. They turn it over on downs. Heath played a great game, yes, too. Yes, he did. He played a very good game. So Cowboys have the ball now. It's third and 14 at the Lions 35. Des Bryant, not on the field. How can that be? Well, maybe because they're going to run it. Yeah, but you still should have your best player on yeah. the field. Because you know somebody going to be scared to keep a safety somewhere Exactly. Back. So there's a penalty, but the Lions decline it. The penalty would have stopped the clock. The right move by Jim Schwartz there. Very good decision. So the Cowboys settle on a field goal. They essentially traded three points for an extra 40 seconds. And here is the Mercedes-Benz 
drive of the day. The Lions come wow, alive. That's a laser. Wow. And that was an incredible throw down the sideline. Stafford to his former college roommate, Chris Durham, to the Cowboys 23. He's a little Somebody jacked up. 33 up. seconds left now. Stafford to Calvin Johnson. What a pass, Brian. Is there anybody in America who didn't know this ball was going to Calvin Johnson and he still completed it? Yeah, somebody Between in the two guys. Second <laughs> Between two guys. Stafford's telling everybody he's going to spike it, right? Mm -hmm. It's called a clock it. Wrong. Clock it play. There's two plays on this you can call. And Dan Marino is one of the first guys to do it. Right. It's a clock it where you actually clock it and throw it in the dirt, and it's a clock play where it's a play call. I think he fooled everybody. He, he just did. did his own thing on he this did. one. His own team had no idea what he was doing. Stafford went no, rogue. Moved. He did it on his own. That proved to be the game-winning touchdown. And here's Dez again getting into an argument on the sideline. Jason Witten. This was uh, not a good scene for Dez on the sidelines. 31-30 the final. Here's Matthew Stafford afterwards. I was spiking it. I was screaming clock. I was going to spike it. Just kind of reading on the field thing. I was yelling spike. They knew I was yelling spike. I saw linebackers kind of standing like this. Our guys didn't fire off. I mean, they just stood up. But I looked down and we were that far. Shoot, I'm going to get that. So um, I just need to go. Shoot, I don't know. I'm making a play, man. I don't know. I'm just trying to help my team win. And sure am glad I uh, got across. Dez is a very passionate player, very competitive player. And uh, he gets a lot of attention from the opposing defenses. And he just, you know, he, he wanted the football. And we want guys who want the football. And, uh, you know, Dez has never been a distraction to our football team. He's a really positive asset to our team on the field and off. The way he works, his passion for the ball game. And, uh, you know, that's good stuff. Well, it's fine company for Matthew Stafford. The fewest games to 15,000 yards, our own Kurt Warner on that board as well, wearing a Giants uniform after uh, so many great years with the Cardinals and the Rams. And now you have Stafford, who's the quickest to 15,000 yards. When you look at this game, the number one thing that stands out has to be Calvin Johnson. Period. This guy was remarkable. Earth. And, and everybody knows that this is where the football is going. They're looking to get the football to Calvin Johnson, and you still cannot stop him. And you see Calvin Johnson down there. And you have a guy lined up over him. Dion just talked to you about this cover, too. You're trying to jam him, jam Calvin to fall back into an area, and that's the only, that's one of the... One of the blind spots in the cover, too, is right in that corner. And when you have a 6'5 guy, you can attack that spot. Calvin, up top again, right here. Same thing. You jam him outside. You try to run with Calvin. All he's doing is throwing the ball up. He's high-pointing the ball. Look at the body length. Going up, getting that football. It's just an incredible job. What a wonderful, what I call seeing speed that he has. The ability to know when, the timing of jumping. I always tell people, oh, man, guy can jump 45 inches or... I don't care that you can jump 45. Do you know when to jump? Right. It's not how high you can jump. It's a sense of time. Calvin Johnson has it, and he has great hands. He's unstoppable. And we say it's high point. Like, that means going up to the highest point to try to get the ball. For a DB, we forget this guy is a monster. He's 6'5". Six, 6'5". Five, six, right. five. Yeah, so his high point is a little higher than most DBs and safeties in the league. So, when he, so Stafford understands if I throw the ball up, my chances of my guy getting the ball is a lot better than your guy. Well, Kelvin feels like he can make every play. Absolutely. And when you throw him the ball, he's trying to dominate you. Most defensive backs are just trying to <laughs> stop him from yeah, scoring. Right. They're not trying to actually catch the ball. They're trying to prevent a big play from happening. 99% of most defensive backs are just playing not to get beat, not to make a play. But Kelvin Johnson is playing to make a play on every single play. When you target a man 16 times 16. and he catches 14 mm -hmm. balls, that is simply unbelievable. And that's something that well, you got to address, too. I, I don't know what or how to the defensive coordinator. You got a, 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 level, a catch 11, a, a catch 10. Can we try something <laughs> that we haven't tried all day today? Yeah, if I'm but I, 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 but it's, it's, it's just impossible. It's an incredible job by, by Calvin Johnson today. Hey, Irv, when you look at these numbers, uh, not a bad day for Des Bryant, obviously overshadowed. Uh, by Calvin Johnson, but what's going on with your guy on the sideline? Man, two well, big blow-ups? Yeah, yeah, listen, and, and, and I've talked with people uh, in, in Dez camp and, and, and people with the Cowboy camp and everything. Listen, and, and the way they see this is just this. They say this is a, you know, it's passion on the sideline. 
uh, you know, guys are telling me that you said, they said, man, these guys were embracing on the bus ride, going to the plane, talking about it, and talking to dance about, hey, we don't have any problem with it. We just want to make sure that the passion is directed in the right way. You know, you, right. you see that on the sideline. And, and I was just talking about here, you know, there have been times I remember I'm going crazy on the sideline, just trying to get everybody going. And I want the ball, and I want everybody to have the sense of urgency I've had. And, and, and I was plenty of time, Dion would come up to me or something. Everybody's coming up to me, calm down, calm down. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear I don't want to hear that right now. But Dion comes up, and no joke, and I, I'll never forget, he'll come up, he'll, he'll look at me, he'll say, hey, Mike. Just calm down and tell it so somebody can hear. It's just passion. You got to know how to address that kind of passion. Dan, the, uh, Dan doesn't have a problem with Jason Wynn. He doesn't have a problem with Tony Romo. He wants the football. Now, for years, we've talked about people on the sideline of the Dallas Cowboys having no passion and no leadership. It yeah. seemed like they don't care. And now we get a guy that maybe with a little too much passion and he doesn't know how to exactly display it in front of TV audience but now we're going to go and say, get rid of the only passion you well, have. You can't do that. No. It's just absolutely right. First crazy. of all, he's the best player on the field. Let's, let's get that straight. And this is a well, guy. Calvin Johnson was on the field. Yeah, I mean, on, on the field for the Dallas Cowboys, 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 Cowboys on his team. I, I apologize. Dez Bryant is a guy that you got to take the good and the bad. I'm not going to say that's bad whatsoever. But you can't ask him to be passionate, you know, on the football field. But now he's got to be not passionate on the sideline. This guy – had a sense of urgency to win the football game when everyone else seemed like they had gotten a bit complacent. At the first time when he started the, um, the not altercation, but on the sideline bantering, he hadn't had a catch. They didn't even get him a ball in the first half, darn it. And then they gave him a token reverse. You could tell they gave him the reverse just to shut him up. Pretty much because it, was, yeah, it, it, it wasn't even called for to give him a reverse at that time in the game. And you see in your nemesis on the other side of the field kill these same defensive backs that guarding you like a man every day of practice. <laughs> you asking them, guys, what's wrong with this? Yeah. You're bumping and running me, but you're letting this man act like a gorilla on you, just take you to school. <laughs> so I love the passion. It's a way to channel it, but I love the passion. Right. Nothing wrong with what he did. If they have no problem with it, I don't think we should as well. I would say it was a little excessive, yeah. but necessary. And like Mike alluded to earlier, there have been some issues where guys haven't been as passionate, showed emotion. And there's a, there's a correct way to do it. Yeah. But when you're, when you're in your pads and you're looking at that clock and the time is winding down and you know that you need to make a play, and it wasn't about – I don't think it was all about him getting the ball. It just no. them, it's about no. them making plays because when Terrence Williams – caught that ball and made that long touchdown, he was cheering for him after yes, he the was. talk on the sideline. And I don't know what transpired in between that and towards the end of the game, but maybe it was another mishap. Maybe there was another play that was missed that probably was not co communicated the right way, but he didn't handle it 100% the right way. It's nothing wrong with right. that. It's football. You can't expect everybody to act nice and quiet and walk on eggshells. Players don't act like that. I've, been a, I, I've lost it a couple of times on the sideline, but you got to gather yourself, get back ready to play. And I think Witten was probably telling him, hey, we still got a little bit of time to go. Get yourself together so we can go out here and try to win this for yeah, well, 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 Let me say well, this, well, this well, though, well, because well, the whole harmony, and I've always said this, and I truly will talk to Dez about this. You, you, you can't go after the quarterback. I, 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 Tony Romo, and, and I'm never going after Troy. Go, and I know TV love, what TV loves to do, is here you say something like this and then go find some tape. Search all you want. You'll never find tape and me going after <laughs> Troy because I knew that's how my kids were going to eat. And I'm going to talk to Dez about this same thing. Like, hey, man, get everybody else going, but you walk quietly up to Tony and say, what's going on, buddy? Can you get me the ball a little bit better tonight? <laughs> and talk to him a little bit better. I will address that with him. And at the end of the day... I still want him on my team. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, listen, it's you know, easy, it's, not I, I much day. rather I much rather hold you back than have to push you out. Yes. I much rather hold you so back than have to push you out. What I get out. from all you guys is you don't feel like this is a problem that's going to win. You feel like they're going to move on. And that's the that's the problem. Now, as long as this was this. Now, if it's, it, it, it's not something lingering, that's that's the difference. And I don't. And this is not going to linger. All right, what's been lingering in Denver is a lot of wins this season for the Broncos. Right. These guys hosting the Redskins. It's the first return for Mike Shanahan as the head coach of the Redskins. He spent 14 seasons in Denver. They had a short little tribute to him. It lasted about 30 seconds. Peyton Manning.